Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. It's hashtag Friday Feels, and I couldn't be more excited to have Janice and Carly Spindell in the house, the matchmakers of all matchmakers. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank, Thank you, you so for much having for having us, us on so such a fun, fun show. Energy Hot is guy, amazing. two gorgeous blondes, <laughs> like lots of music. Go <laughs> over it. We appreciate she you. She walks in the studio and she goes, she looks at Jess and she goes, you guys are like the Foxy Twins. <laughs> God, I like take it. Yeah. I like, I like the New Yorker, kind of that. You know. We get right to the point. Right to the point. <laughs> Love it. No, no point in wasting time. <laughs> So I'm, I would like to talk about dating as the modern day woman, because that's been a very difficult challenge for a lot of us who are single and who are looking to have love and a career and want it all. How do we do that? We totally believe in women always having it all because life is too short to settle. And what we've been finding is it's all about your attitude. So if you think you can do it, you can do it. And obviously that applies to dating and every aspect of your life. So we love to empower women to live their best lives, whether it's finding new hobbies, shedding a few pounds, going out and approaching men in a bar, making a game out of it, meeting new people, you know, swiping left and right on the apps, <laughs> and really believing that you deserve someone amazing and you should definitely be with the man of your dreams. All right. So many people talk about you have to compromise or you have to sacrifice in order to find love. Is it true? Well, I don't like the word compromise for starters. At the end of the day, people have to be realistic with their expectations of what they're looking for. Super important. We like to say, unfortunately, that some people have what we call a magic mirror. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if you're looking in the mirror and you not think you you're seeing, <laughs> and you think you're seeing someone who you're really not, then sorry. Right. It's, it's like that new movie happening. with um, Amy Schumacher, I Feel Pretty. Snatched? Oh, I yes. Feel Pretty. <laughs> Where, you know, you look in the mirror and you don't look anything like that and you feel amazing. We're all about self-confidence and really putting your best foot forward, as I said, and feeling great. But as Jenna said, you need to be realistic. All right. So we have a distinction. I use a distinction a lot with dating, love, and relationship that's transactional versus transformational or transcending, right? Mm -hmm. So I did watch your guys' video. You're, you know, just, you guys are so powerful. You're like, we are the best. Bam, we're just going to own it. Um, but I love that you guys say we, you know, stick away from like gold diggers mm -hmm. and, you know, really that whole transactional thing. How do you do that? Well, I would probably venture to say that our process sort of weeds out the riffraff in terms of men and in terms of women. It separates the men from the boys and those gold diggers, we can smell them a mile away and we're in la la land. <laughs> <laughs> so to say the very least, if we need a five foot 10 blonde with green eyes who's beyond stunning with high cheekbones and gorgeous, and the first thing out of her mouth is, I'm sorry, I only date men that own planes. Oh, I'm sorry, nice meeting you, mm. bye. You know, the only thing that we can say that we are huge believers in is the most important thing to a man in a woman is confidence. And women don't get that. You have to exude confidence. You want to talk about, about transformations? You know, women should take a budget or have a budget. They should literally write things down. It's all in my book, in my like first book. Like a dating book. budget. And look in the mirror. And are you realistic with your expectations of what you're looking for? Are you a gold digger? Because if you are a gold digger, like, we don't damn, want anything to do with you. But it's really interesting because when I was reading your book, it is almost an unapologetic look at yourself. Mm -hmm. What do you want? What are your non-negotiables? Exactly. What is your budget for this? It really made me think about it in a whole new way and put things into perspective. We love that. You really have to look inward before you can look outward because if you don't know what makes you happy or what you should be doing in your free time, how do you know who the perfect partner is? I meet tons of women for coffee when I think they're for a client. I always re-meet them, as does Janice. And my pet peeve is when they get there before me, they order an expensive coffee, they pick an expensive coffee place, and then they expect me to pay. It's like, you don't even say thank you. That doesn't send a good vibe because what we get from men is that they appreciate when women make a small gesture. So our clients are the men. They are old-fashioned and love to be the man, be the gentleman, plan the date, take the woman out for the date, obviously. But, you know, we hear a lot of feedback, whether men are meeting on the apps or from us, that the women don't do nice small gestures. So a man takes you out for five amazing meals. What are you doing as a thank you? Are you buying him breakfast if it gets to that level? Are you cooking him a sweet dinner and buying the groceries? If you're at a movie, are you buying the movie tickets? You know, little small gestures that 
what does it cost you, $10? And it's not about the money. It's about it's the It's about the thought process. But, but what about, like, I think that the most unattractive or attractive thing uh, is that when someone's negative, how do you, when you're interviewing oh, people, yeah. how do you... Make if you're sure a Debbie you're... Downer, you immediately, that's part of the transformation. Look in the mirror and don't be realistic with your expectations of what you're looking for and don't have an attitude and don't be negative. I mean, I could go on and on and on <laughs> about women don't, 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 don't. But that's negative. <laughs> and if we, exactly. <laughs> you spot it, you got it. Exactly. <laughs> and at the end of the day, we want to empower women. We deal with unbelievable men all over the world. Unfortunately, ladies, and I don't want to burst the bubble, it's a man's world out there. Because it can be, because there's two million more single women in every major cosmopolitan city than there are men. Oh, Amazing, yes. Right? Statistics, check them out. And it's a competitive world. So not to be rude, but if we meet you, and if we meet you, and if we meet her, and there's one thing that rubs me the wrong way, could it possibly be the dead fish handshake? <laughs> Wait. You could be stunning. Went to Yale. Drives her went to Harvard. Crazy. She makes a note in the I file. will not match you. Stop. I it mm. makes my skin crawl. It's like this is America. Shake your hand. So if I be hug confident. you, so if I perfect. Hug you and stuff. Warm and but we love that. Yes. Love but, it. We actually ask women. Uh -huh. One of the questions we ask women is when you get on a date, what's your MO? What do you do? And we'll Lots of women, well, I'll shake his hand, I'll give him a kiss on the cheek, do the hug. Men when want we warm meet women men, that are approachable and loving and kind. And you know, you gave us a hug. When you go to give someone a hug, it sort of breaks the ice. Mm -hmm. But we do, back to the negative question. Um, when we interview women, we ask them a ton of questions from how do you define love to what makes you happy? What do you see when you look in the mirror? What are you doing for fun? You can How tell you? when they answer, like, well, this is what I don't want, what I don't like, and you're like, right. that's not what I asked So you. we yeah. had a small group <laughs> meeting last night where we meet a ton of women in a round table setting, and we ask them all a question. And this lovely widow was hogging the time because she was so positive and so happy. And so not attractive. <laughs> wow. She but must have come we'll to privately because she gave us, you know, I said, what makes you happy? And I think her answer was 40 different things that we like women that have interests and passions and hobbies and you know, what do you do on a Saturday? Well, I walk the dog and I go to the gym. That's not interesting. You need to go to museums and try new classes and maybe meditate and go for a hike and have a brunch and, you know, do 10 different things so that your life is busy and fulfilled. That's you basically like. have to have a life. Right. <laughs> Men don't want women. And, and not that this woman that Carly is talking about, because I know exactly who it is, not that she's a gold digger because she's not. She actually got a very large settlement, but she has no passion. How am I supposed to fix her up with somebody if she doesn't have anything and, and to talk versa, about? A woman doesn't want to be with a man, doesn't have a mission or a exactly. or whatever. You know, so many men, though, have been sort of disempowered with the whole Me Too movement, yes. what's happening with the feminine movement. How do we empower men like Rob, who do have great intentions? What is women <laughs> can we do? Leave me alone. <laughs> he is like down You like need I to be empowered? I don't get that vibe. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate this that. This is a you, I cool you. dude with a lot of energy, and I think he knows what he wants. But he's also 40 single and likes being single and likes his life. It's so LA. It's LA. We think that you have to really be a gentleman. And, you know, obviously Me Too is a different story. Um, but it's funny, we haven't heard that much from men. I think with the apps is different than when men come to us, obviously, because when you're hiring us, you've done your due diligence, you know that we're the real deal, which I think we've said three times today. Um, and, you know, you're really ready to meet that partner. So you don't need to be empowered because you are so excited that you have the energy going through you already. I've, I've met so many men, though, who will say, I'm so glad you like me opening the door for you because I'm too nervous now to open the door for women oh. because of the repercussions that we as women right. have been giving to these men for all these years. I, I'm so grateful that you're eating a dinner. I'm so grateful that you <laughs> ordered dessert, and that, but that you offered to pay. And I feel like men don't even know how to behave a lot of the time, especially here in Los Angeles. You shouldn't offer to pay and you shouldn't do the fake reach. If a man is offering, <laughs> if, if a man is <laughs> not even offering, Offering. If a man is asking you to join him for dinner, you have to let him be the man and pay. Because men were brought up by their mothers who hopefully brought them up as gentlemen, at least the men that we deal with. And at the end of the day, they're taught, you ask someone out for dinner, it's you your pleasure to take care of the bill. When women do, women don't know this, and it's in my book, and they're just sometimes so stupid, for lack of any <laughs> other word. When you offer to pay, 
and you can jump right in here. You're basically telling a man, I don't want to be obligated. I don't like him. That's what men think. Really? When I surveyed over 500 men for the second book, that is what every one of them said because women do the fake reach and they do offer to pay. And they'll but, accept but it just if you to do the be fake reach. A little bit like, you know, to play devil's advocate for a minute. I mean, a lot of this sounds really old school. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, there's a there's a whole new generation coming up that would be like, what are they talking about? You know what I mean? And I get, like, maybe your clients are in that mindset, and that's good. I, I'm all about people living what works for them, so I'm not against it. I just feel like, what do you, aren't you finding that some people are kind of like, no, 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 that does not help. So we love men who are old school and women who appreciate the men that are old school. But obviously, mm -hmm. you know, Men are powerful, they want powerful women. Some men want a more traditional relationship, but we don't get into that until way down the road. Um, but you know, the people in their early 20s, obviously the hedge fund guys that hire us or the different entrepreneurs and entertainment out here, when they're 28 and they want a 25 year old who has life experience and who can bring something to the table, do they expect her to pay? Not so much, but they do expect, as I said before, the small gestures, so. Thoughtful. You know, yes. be thoughtful. Maybe you're planning the fourth date and you're going for an amazing hike and then you're having brunch somewhere or you're driving to Malibu and then you're having lunch there. It's, you know, the the equal is what we call it, that men want uh, men want women of their own size. Makes so sense. if you're running an empire, you don't want a timid little woman who's going to, you know, sit in the background and figure things out. You want a woman who's going to take control and be your partner and, you know, really sail through life with you. So it sounds like in lots of ways your ideal client is someone who's already done the inner work. They come to you, they're yes. clear, they're confident. Mm -hmm. they're when they come to us, they're ready. And that is one of the reasons why our success is as high as it is. Because we're not a dating service. We're, we're really putting a lot of thoughts into and thought process into the match. And at the end of the day, it all boils down to chemistry. We all know mm -hmm. we're sitting here with one that men are visual. They fall in love through their eyes. We're just the messenger. They're superficial. They're shallow. They want we a love woman that. It makes that, our lives easy. <laughs> that, that has it all. But at the end of the day, they're men. So if we call a man or email a man and say, oh my God, we just met the perfect girl for you. What do you think the first thing out of his mouth is? Send me a photograph. Mm -hmm. Not how old is she? Not what does she do? Not Where what's her name? Nothing. Send me a photograph. And if they're not attracted to the picture for whatever ridiculous reason, then our hands it's over. are tied. Right. But it's back over. to your question, we love when people do the inner work. You know, to really be happy and love yourself and live your best life, you've got to do the inner work to figure out what that is. So that being said, we will get a client who is amazing and might need a little sprucing up with his clothes. So we'll or have a anything team else. For that. <laughs> or uh, his teeth. We have a client that we were sitting across the table from where Janice is a straight shooter and will tell you the man is good looking, very well built, tall, blah, 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 has it all. And Janice goes, is there anything you would change about yourself? And he goes, I think I work a little too hard. And she's like, anything visual? <laughs> and he goes, well, I have Invisalign. And she goes, you don't say. He so took it out of his pocket because we were showed eating. Us. And then he said something and I said, but what about the space between your teeth? And he's like, whoa, you don't really pull any punches. And I said, no, I don't. So you're beyond awesome. But he had spaces in, like big spaces in between his teeth and he needed veneers or whatever. He was very open to the idea and he will be doing Invisalign first on his own and then considering veneers. Um, but we like to really empower everyone, both men and women, to be their best and you know further their lives and do everything they can to make themselves happy that's really what it's all about is just being your best self of course and putting your best foot forward in, in any sense it because it's a like competitive world out there we're not really big into the whole feminist thing and the women that come to us i don't really think we're over there's an overabundance of them but a lot of people are delusional and unrealistic with their expectations of what they're looking for. And in today's day and age, with the powerful alpha females and alpha males that we all deal with and that are all over the world, whether it's in La La Land, New York, Michigan, Indiana. Paris, London. We just came from the South. I mean, we've been all over the, the world Southern lately. Southern gentlemen are so amazing. So amazing. They are just so respectful. But one last thing, then we'll let you talk, sorry. We also really like women to respect themselves. People always say, when should you be intimate? And we say, that's not on us, that's on you. Like if you're going to sleep with a man on the second date, and then he's going to come back to us and say, well, I really like um, Amanda, 
but I'm also interested in seeing someone else, that's not, you know, that's your problem. <laughs> and then if he ghosts her. We say that you shouldn't sleep with someone until you're intimate and exclusive. That way you feel great about it. Mm -hmm. So self-respect, very important. So we hear a lot about gold diggers as women, but you know, uh, I've met a few clients in Malibu and around, and these are like, you know, say a 65 year old man that's driving around a Ferrari and he wants this young woman and then he's like, all these women, they just want me for my money. It's like, well, you're going out you're with, leading with that 30 right. year old, you know, that is clearly, this is a transactional thing. Like, mm -hmm. how do you deal with a man that is going, I want this beautiful woman, but I don't want a gold digger. But clearly like, you know, he's putting that out there. We say that's not appropriate. Sorry, I interrupted. I had breakfast yesterday next to a woman who was younger than me. She was probably 27, 28, and I couldn't see her face because her ring took up probably her whole hand. And her husband had a facelift, or her fiance, sorry, and was probably about 65 and, you know, pulled tight back. And to me, that's classic LA, where what does a 28 year old woman have any interest in dating a man who could be her father or her grandfather? <laughs> so. I mean, I'm 32. I, I have no interest in hanging out with a 50 year old. I'm going to make references that he's not even going to know. Interesting. Um, but, you know, those men are not our clients, I think is so the you'll answer. Call them out on it. You'll say, well, oh, absolutely. We were here five years ago sitting across from a man who was one of the best looking men I think we've both ever seen in our lives <laughs> with his fancy this, fancy that, blah, blah, blah. And he was fancy 42 <laughs> or I 47, I don't remember. And thank God I was wearing sunglasses because we were outside because my eyes were firing. I was so angry. And his girlfriend was 19. <gasps> in so college. She's in college, has a roommate. She can't even drink. How do you go to a bar with a 19-year-old? Oh. And he was trying to sign up for our ultra VIP program. And he loved us. Why? I don't know. Because we were very rude. <laughs> because, you know, we were appalled. And he goes, so what's the next step? And we were like, you get in your car and you have a good day. You know, we're not the right service if you're 40 looking for 19. I mean, you can't even go to a bar without her being carted. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that at least. So to answer your question, men are, as a rule, insecure for whatever reason, most men. And sometimes we have a client together who is probably one of the best bachelors in New York. She likes him more than I do because I cut right through the chase <laughs> and tell him how he behaves. I mean, I have no patience whatsoever for him. I and her, every <laughs> woman that he could get involved oh, with. Oh, yes. Now I know who she's talking about. It took me a moment. We have a bunch of clients together. She just matched him with a girl who was literally the perfect match, as most of the women are. Perfect match. And I mean, all he did was talk about his plane and... His townhouse, how he's a pool on the roof, blah, blah, blah. And she's not a gold digger. She comes from a successful family. You know, she has a great job. She wants her equal, but she's not interested in a guy talking on the first date about his plane, his roof, and so all the things. Oh, and his miles and or something on an oh airline. Oh, my God. Like, how does that come up? So, so basically I yelled at what him. he was doing is he's insecure. And he wanted to have the chance. He probably got the vibe because he said right away she didn't like him. Right. So he, as soon as he said that, he got the vibe that, okay, let me talk about money. So then maybe I can lock her in and then maybe she'll like me. Well, guess what? 50,000 times. That turns women off. Mm -hmm. Like, I have no tolerance for that. So I had that. to tell him, these are not gold diggers. You hired us to find you a successful woman who is going to be your wife. She's not a bimbo. You know, she's not interested in your plane or your miles or your rooftop pool because who cares? <laughs> Unless we're on the plane, we, yeah. Well, maybe he's no. out. Right. Men, yeah. so where men can are. Find you? Where, how can they work with you? What's the process? We're pretty easy to find, to say the least. The website is www.janisspindelmatchmaker.com. We're both we're on Instagram. We're headquartered in New York, but we are worldwide. Obviously, we're actually off to Europe next Friday. Um, we will be in seven countries in Europe, all over the place, meeting women and doing our thing. And we are on Instagram, of course, at Janice and Carly Spindell. We are on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you name it, we're on it. But just to go back, because it makes my skin crawl, if you can't figure that out, many, many, many years ago, he's now married with children, which is the most unheard of thing ever. The man was 44, <laughs> never married, not educated, started working in high school, built a $600, billion, $600 million empire on his own, self-made, which is very respectful. <sighs> and he doesn't want women after him for his money, but he wants a jabby girl. Okay, fine. So why are you sending your driver in your Bentley to pick her up if you don't want 
to her to know that you have money. I'm sorry, did I? Are you stupid? <laughs> and at the end of the day, we try men... to keep them to be realistic. Like if you live in um, Miami and you're looking to meet women from Miami and New York, don't send your plane for her. You know, what kind of vibe does that give that she's showing up at Teterboro with a car that you sent for her and getting on the plane? Like, no, you don't fall in love for the wrong reasons. So we protect the identity of our clients and we are super into confidentiality. So we don't tell the women what they do, how much money they have, how many homes they have, if they have a plane, it's none of their business. <laughs> they don't get a photo of the man, they don't get his age, they don't get his last name because we don't want anybody, internet, Facebook, whatever, stalking anybody to find out what he's worth, what he has. We want people going in literally as blind dates and falling in love for the right reasons because they have chemistry, because they connect, because they have intellectual stimulation, great conversation, because blah, they're blah, awesome, blah, and blah, the man blah, is blah. awesome, and they That's have a great time right. together. Well, I wish we had more time. You guys are a great, like, it's so entertaining. <laughs> I wish next time maybe you'll be a little bit more, you know, truthful and kind of tell us how you do <laughs> <laughs> so awesome, you guys. I love it. I love the New York just, like, you're just owning it and it's really it's fun super fun yeah so let's stay tuned uh, we're gonna have a great conversation about how to act your way to truth uh in your seductiveness your whatever it is that you want out of life right so stay tuned you guys we'll be right back